Good, even, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Pyo, and for the next 20 minutes, I'm going to present my research, and the title is this. And, and the presentation outline will be the background, the objective, literature review, methodology, and findings, discussions, and recommendations. And this will be like the other normal research study outlines. Before going into the research, let me tell you what is a, the tuberculosis. It is a, it's a disease called, caused by the mycobacterium tuberculosis bacilli, and it is transmitted by air droplets. And, and it means it can spread to any other simply by coughing and sneezing. So you will not know whether you have been transmitted or not. And when, the, when your immune system is weak, the symptoms such as chronic cough, chronic cough and low grade of fever can happen, appear on you. And one TB patient, if not treated, could spread to another 10 to 15 patients annually. And the another one is the multi drug resistant tuberculosis. What is a multi drug resistant tuberculosis? It is the resistance to both isoniazid and rifampicin, which are the main treatment medications in the TB treatment. And this is a global burden of the TB, and it is currently the ninth leading cause of death. And in 2016, 1.7 million of deaths in the, uh, due to the TB. And the incidence for the TB is 10.4 million of people. And almost, all, almost out of that, 45% of the incidents are from the Southeast Asia regions. And also, more than nearly 500 multi-drug resistance TB occurred in around the world. And also, in Myanmar, TB is one of the 30 highest burden country worldwide, and is a TB is a lead, sixth leading, leading cause of death in the country. And in 2014, around about 142 TB cases were identified. And as we do, do not have the good surveillance system and data, we have to rely on the WHO annual report. And in 2016, WHO estimated that that there would be 9,000 of MDRTB cases in 2016. But we, as you can see from the graph, we could only identify 3,000 MDRTB patients, but most of, most of the patients are in the gap. And this huge gap, oh, sorry. And, so, yeah. and this huge gap in identifying in the MDRTB in the country poses a large, huge public threat for the country. And almost in that 3,000 MDIDB patients, most of the TB, most of the MDIDB patients are enrolled in Yangon. So what the country did is the Myanmar National TB Program issued that every registered TB case must be gene expert tested in Yangon so that they could identify the MDIDB cases. So I, w I would like to explain about something about gene as well because it's an, it, would, it could be a new term to some of the patients who are not friendly in the TB region. What is a gene as well? It's a, like a cartridge-based nuclear acid amplification test, but it can detect the bacilli and also the rapamycin resistance. And due to the limited resource settings, and our country used the gene as well as the diagnostic test for the MDR TB. And there are currently eight gene expert testing sites in the Yangon. <coughs> okay. And, and my main research was done in the NGO called the Population Services International, and it, it, which is a, one of the largest NGOs in the country, where they have a network of over 1,300 GB practitioners enrolled in its Sun TV program. And, a study done in the country in 2014 showed that more than 50% of the patients, that their primary contact for their health care is the GP. And so, and also, the PSI has a highest contribution in the country with a 14% uh, apart from the National Tuberculosis Program, which is 77.6, 7, 7, which means that it has the second largest contribution in the TB finding. So my study area was done in the PSI. And, but what's the problem in PSI is that only 15% from the TB patients from the PSI in Yango are uh, gene expert testing in 2016. Okay. 
And I selected two townships, which have the very high MDRDB patients and also low gene instrument referral percentages. And our, our primary objective for this study is to identify the barriers and enablers of the PSI referral of the presumptive MDRDB cases for gene instrument vaccine in the two townships in Yangon. And also our specific aims are to elicit the perceptions and experience of the presumptive MDRDB patients and their caregiver families and the service providers which relate to the MDRDB patient, MDRDB diagnosis referral services. And also to make recommendations for the improvement in referral linkages for gene export testing. Before conducting our study, I, we did a literature review relating to the topic and identified some of the barriers and some of the facilitators for the diagnosis. The facilitators were the decentralized testing sites and the support from the family and the healthcare providers and also the trust in doctors. And the barriers that we identified are the lack of reference, systemic reference system and the perceptions of poor quality services, inadequate access to testing sites, and lack of TV knowledge in patients, and the financial hardships. And since, and since we are interested to understand the experience of patients, families, and the service providers who underwent the journey of the MDRDB diagnosis, qualitative research method became the most applicable as we try to explore these experiences. And we use in in-depth interviews of the three different with the three different topic guides to three and with pa to patients, caregiver families, and the service providers. As for the sampling design, we use the purpose of sampling as we try to map out the different participant characteristics. A total of the 70 individuals were interviewed, and we have a good responding with uh, only four approaching patients refuse to participate in the study. In, during the study, we couldn't contact 10 TB patients and more and two TB HIV patients were not contactable. I tried to call them three times, but the phone was off and closed off all the time. And we used the correct criteria for our study. And during the data, uh, what the inclusion and and the inclusion criteria for our study is a GP in that two townships who are enrolled in the PSI, and also patients who receive the tuberculosis, tuberculosis treatment from 2016 onwards with or without gene ASPA testing, because we interviewed patients who undergo gene ASPA testing and also who didn't go to the gene ASPA testing. And also we interviewed the caregivers from each of the type of the patients, and then some key informal interviews with the NGO staff, PSI staff, and the health volunteers. And the exclusion criteria is the people who do not fit the inclusion criteria and patients who are younger than eight years old at age and patients who do not have a contact number in the registration form. Because when I went down into the GPs in the private centers, right, I couldn't, uh, in the registration form, the, most of the clinical providers didn't fill the phone numbers in the registries. So it was a very hard time to find the patients. And most of the patients are quite wrong because they didn't provide the correct address. And so it was very difficult to find the baby patients in the, in, during the cell data collection. And we ensure the data collection and analysis maintain good quality and the regular through of the study that we used, we tested the pilot testing for two IDIs and then the topic guide was revised according to the interview. And then all of, our, all of our interviews were audio transcribed, audio recorded and transcribed. And the interviews were done in Burmese language. And then all the interviews were transcribed and translated into the English by me and another independent translator who is fluent in both Burmese and language, English language. And the interview duration was from, duration was from 40 minutes to 90 minutes. And I used a demanded analysis approach to study this, uh, to, to analyze the study. Before the demand analysis, I have to read all the transcripts to familiarize with the data, and then I identify themes, and after that, the, the, these are transformed into codes and, and defining and redefining and aggregated into the code book. And then I use the MVVO software version 12 for the data management. And I was a single coder, that was a very important, I was a single coder for the study and that would be one of my limitations. 
and we identify five main themes in the study. The first one is that there is a diagnostic fatigue in the patients, uh, complex diagnostic procedures, like patients have to do multiple tests in the different locations before doing expert testing, because in our in in the country, right, if the patients are uh, coming to the clinic with the suspect symptoms, suspect for the TB symptoms, at first they have to be referred to the student college student examination center, and when the student when they get the student examination result, they have, to, they have to come back to the clinic and show that to the doctor. And then the doctor will refer the patients again to the gene expert testing sites. So the patients have to come and go, come and go for multiple times. And, these, and this indicates that there, were, there, there, were, there is a complete, complex diagnosis procedures. And also, most of the investigations are in different sites. So, so there, there is a limitation in the diagnostic capabilities. Okay, there is a call that, that there is a call that the patient mentioned. The doctor examined me and referred me to the student examination center. And when I got the result, I revisited the clinic and showed that to the doctor. He referred me to another place for the gene spot for follow-up examination. Also. Since the testing sites are in the different locations, patients have to take out of their work time and go to the investigations, which stress out their financial constraints as they lost their daily wage and also for the transportation. Moreover, we observed that there is no standardized and adequate transportation reimbursement for those patients in the NDO, in the PSI. And then one patient mentioned that we only got 3,000 million yards for the transportation and then no more of the days. And this is from the, one of the patients who undergo gene expert testing. And another major barrier for the gene expert testing is difficulty in producing enough sputum in the patients. Since the, when the patients are registered in the deep, in clinic, they will be first given the medications. And the gene expert referral is like within one week of the treatment initiation. So some of the patients couldn't produce sputum after the initiation of treatment. And True to be though, it's not easy to produce sputum, especially after taking the medications. Before that, it was quite easy, but after that, I, can, I couldn't produce sputum, so it is very difficult when, when we go to take the test. They ask us to spit in a cup, but I can't. Even I can, it was very few. Another, we also identified that the self-stigmatization and like, when the patient was diagnosed, he was very angry. Why it, sh why it should be him, not the others. Like, he, was, he, he questioned this to himself, and he was very angry. And then he had the anxiety that he, 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 he feared that he, his status would, like, be, would be discriminated from his friends, and this lot, like, and worried that they would transmit to others. Sorry. If I have TB, I might not be able to go out in the public quite often, and then I couldn't do any work. I'm going through a lot of emotions and fear. And then I decided to throw away all the paperwork that the, uh, that the doctor gave me. In that case, he didn't go to the gene expert testing, but the doctor did refer the him to the gene expert test center to diagnose the MDRDB. And also, the one of the Major setback is an unpleasant past experience to the public hospital sectors that the negative doctors attitudes towards the patients. And there is overcrowding and lack of privacy in the counseling. And then the prolonged queuing time is also affecting, are also affecting the patients taking up the gene expert services. And the, the benches at the clinics was not enough for all patients. And then he got, and we, so we had to sit for where there are seats available, and then he got impatient if we didn't hear our names called, and then he scolded the patients. So these are the, these are the things that have normally happens in the developing world, I think. <laughs> and then another, another factor is the social environment, which also affects on the gene export uptake. We found that the doctor-patient relationship is one of the important factors and trust in respect in doctors 
encourage the patient to go for the vaccine, even when the patients were lack of the MDDB knowledge. But most of the patients reported that they received less information from the patients, from their GP, related to the MDDB information. And also, we found, moreover, we found that most, uh, most providers, some of the providers were not fully committed to the TB treatment. Like, they just diagnosed the patients and they let the other things do, uh, they left the, their clinic assistants to do the things for the other things like counseling and the treatment, follow up to give the medications. They didn't do that by themselves, but they, they just let the, their clinic assistants do. For example, in, in, doctors, in some doctor's clinic, he didn't directly manage the TB case. It's very rare for him to treat, and it is a clinic assistant who is doing all the TB things, including the treatment. And also, we found that the emotional support from the family and friends and supervisors and knowledge from the community might help the patients to go for the gene H1 uptake. My children encouraged me, and also the nurse here advised me to go to the hospital to have the gene H1 testing. So these are the, some of the encouraging factors for the gene H1 uptake. Another one is the free service. And this is from the doctor's perspective, like all, almost all the investigations for TB or free, the sputum examination, chest x-ray, and gene h spot. And also, we're giving free treatment and medication to those patients as well. So these are the, some of the encouraging factors for the patients to go for gene h spot. The fourth major theme is uh, like the policy guide. So the four major theme is a policy guidance relating to the gene e spot. Because of the frequent change of policy for the gene e spot, especially two times in two years in Yangon, put the extra burden for the PSI staff who has a responsibility to give the updated technical guidelines to all its assigned GPs. Also, we identify that most of the providers were fully aware of the latest guideline, but they are not strictly following them all. Because some of the providers are quite conservative, and so it's just like, okay, I will just, it's, it's not important to refer them to the Jing A spot, just give them the TB medications as well. So it's hard, so it's hard to accept the change within a very short period for the Jing A spot policy. And also, we identify that you use of the conventional paper-based registry and the referral form make, a, make us very hard to follow the, follow the patients, whether to know the, the status of the patients, whether they go or not go to the Jing Expert Center. So it was a comment from the PSI staff that most of the, because they are the employees from the NGO, and so they, were, they are responsible to get the result of the Jing Expert. But the current situation is like, it's not there. All, all of the responsibilities are not due to them because somebody, some patients will not go to the tech center even after the counseling. And some of the GP didn't refer their patients. And also, if the patients come back to the clinic, the, some of the doctors might forget, might forget to fill the form in the registry. So, so they mentioned that it's not their responsibility to, you, to, to be taken care of. So the last one is the, uh, um, I think is it, it should be the emergence of the emergence of student college, student transporter and volunteer in that thing. Yeah, I just, I just, yeah, I just did it wrong. And then after talking about the role, because the PSI have initiated some of the some of the options for the patients to go for the gene expert testing. One of the th thing is that patients don't need to go to the vaccine centers anymore. They just have to come, go, and give their student cards to the clinics so that one will collect, one student transporter will be given a sign 
to collect the sputums from the different clinics and then we'll refer them back to the clinic center. We'll, we'll collect them all and go to the clinic centers and he will be get back with the results to the, each of the clinics so that the patients don't need to go to the centers anymore. So it will save a lot of time and financial burden to the patients. And it, it, and we had a lot of positive things from the patients about these innovative ideas. So it was very important in the gene export uptake as well. I think it's very convenient for us because we do not need to give a lot of time. We have our own work and also I will not have to pay for any other transportation charges. And this is a summary of the key findings. From the patient side, right? Um, knowledge on the disease susceptibility encouraged for testing. However, even without the knowledge, strong medical advice from the GP would promote for the service uptake. And also, we, we observed that the lack of the one-stop one service, that patients have to go multiple, multiple services at different locations could induce a financial burden. And also, some of the policy barriers are the doctor and provider patient's relationship and a self-stigmatization. And some of the supportive elements are from the family and neighbor and work supervisor support. And from the GP side, the facilitator is a technical support from the staff and barriers are the lack of incentive. There is no incentive from the GPs for referral. So, and there is no tracking system for the patients. So for the, for the staff, so they cannot track whether the, patient, whether the patients is dropped out in which stage. They do not know that. And then there is no reliable system for the, because they just start the student transportation system student transporters, there is no reliable QA and, Q, QA and QC systems, SOPs for them yet. And so these are the, some of the barriers that I identified during our study. And we found that most of the findings are quite similar with the literature review that we have conducted before. So for the discussion, when we observe some of the factors, which, was, which, is the, I, which I mentioned before, the, there's Gene export is a poor role of the gene export services in health system and no compliance with guidelines by the service providers. And then there are some failures in the referral pathway as well. And then for the sustainable interventions, current health system is very fragmented and lack of ownership. So there is still like, uh, you don't know where to track the patients if the patient is lost in the, mid, in the middle part. And then overstretched human resources of the public health facilities, leading them to the and the, so impatience from the doctors and healthcare providers leading to the um, negative experience and also limited resources are found. And some of, there are some strengths of this study. At first, we do the, did the data triangulation. We, because we interviewed some of the different levels like patients, caregivers, and the healthcare providers, so we, did, we can do the data triangulations from each level. And then the, for the verbatim transcript is like, and it's not like free note we use because all the transcripts, all the recordings, all the interviews were recorded, and so we can we can translate and transcribe and do the analysis team. And it is a first qualitative study. To my knowledge, it's a first qualitative study in the Yangon in the PSI to explore the private sector referral blocks for the presumptive and the presumptive cases for the gene expert testing. And there are some limitations of the study. The first one is we couldn't include the national tuberculosis program staff in this study because we didn't have enough time to pass the uh, NUMA Edega IRB in NUMA. And also, as I am, I am the single coder for this study, and this might reduce some of the interrated reliability or something as well. But we do discuss with other note takers and uh, transcri transcribers during the interview pro process. And the, before the start of the study, I was the staff at the PSI, and that's, that might induce some, of the, induce some of the bias in the study. And this is for the linkage, normal, link, normal, flow, of, mm, normal flow of the diagram in the country, like patients have to go through the MDLAV diagnosis, which I mentioned in the past. Like when the patient develops symptoms, he need to go to the GP for to seek care, 
And then after that, patients have to be referred at information about Gene A spot and refer to the testing center. And then he should, they should take the Gene A spot and then go back with the results. If the MDR TB present, he should be give, he should be registered at the township registry. And then if the patient get the result, he should go back to the doctor. And after that, PSI staff would collect all the data from the GP by the end of the month. And then they collect the, they report the data to the National Tuberculosis Program. What is happening is like there are some of the GPs who didn't who failed to give the advice or change expert testing, although they fully aware the testing guidelines. And there are also some of the patients ignore the doctor's advice, and patients did go to the facility but didn't complete the test for the variety of the reasons because due to the prolonged queuing time of multiple appointments, the patient exhausted during the test, during the middle part, and then they lost. And after that, he, even if he came back with the, register, with the result, some of the doctors are quite busy. So I think it's quite normal for most of the doctor, doctors, uh, they are not familiar with the paperwork. They just, have, they just want to diagnose and treat the patients. They don't want to fill all the registry forms. And some of the, some of the providers didn't knock it down and so they didn't put the result in the register and so it was a, it was there was difficulty to find all the results even if the patients did the did the g expert testing and the last but not least i think that is quite mm, impossible but some of the staff didn't accurately report the data but it's quite few and as for the agreement because i did the I did a study with the PSI, so I have to give the report back. And we provided three recommendations to PSI that they need to improve the quality of the service provided by some GPs so that they could fully comply to the national guidelines. So we provide the PSI to conduct more super supportive supervision and monitoring visit to the low performers more frequently, and also introduce some incentive mechanism for the GPs so to increase to their motivations and they're adopting the service quality assessments by the mystery clients and having some easy interviews. And also, since the spewed and transporter was warmly welcomed from the patients, Sorry. We, we encourage the PSI to develop the standard operational procedures for the quality assurance of the speed and transporting system, and also to leverage and expand the network of world train and world supported speed and transporters in all townships where BSI is working in Yangon. And also, since all, of, since all the registries and the monitoring forms are in the paper-based system, and it, it was very difficult to track the case along the cascade, so we suggest to design and grow out an interoperable electronic record system with unique identifier to each patient. And that will allow the PSI and the GP and the NTP to closely track the patients. And, the, and this will prevent dropout from the cascade. And also we propose some of the follow-up steps from the National Tuberculosis Programs for their consideration that we, uh, we suggest to increase grow out and cover, to, to have the higher coverage of the gene export machines. And since at the start of the study, there was only eight gene export machines, but at the end of the study, the gene export machines number increased from eight to 13. But there are 45 townships in Yangon, and the, uh, I would like to mention that Yangon, um, the, the size, of, the size and populations of Yangon is quite similar to the Singapore country. So there are only eight and all, they are only 13. So you can imagine the, you can imagine the, 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 the coverage is not quite good. And also, we encourage the NDP to strengthen the implementation of their current policies and also to simplify and streamline the current diagnostic complexities in the national guidelines. And this is the public health implications and significance of this study. And I will not read it because I think the time is quite, yeah. And these are my references.
And this comes to the end of my presentation. And I would like to conclude my section by expressing thanks to all those who gave me a chance to share my research finding at this conference. And those, my supervisor and my close friends in Yangon who helped me with the, the study from the beginning to the end. And also, I would like to pay my gratitude to the participants and the patients and their families and the frontline GP, GP providers and to those who contributed in the study. Thank you very much.